Hey, Daniel Ducker here, and today I wrote Gold Dragon Castle, in which we follow young Jamila on her path to darkness and redemption. So when we last left her, she was seven years old. She watched her sister be devoured by baby dragons, and she gained her own baby dragon as a companion. Her first step on the path to becoming a dragon rider. We now join her at 14 years old. Uh, she's a page in Gold Dragon Castle. She's left her family to be raised by the dragon riders as a scion of nobility. And she, of course, is Lemurian. The dragon riders are Atlantean. They are from the lost continent of Atlantis. When it sank, they fled to Lemuria. They enslaved the Lemurians. They conquered them. They colonized them. And they've kept them as an underclass. Most of the population are Lemurians. But the rulers are all Atlanteans. Until Jamila comes along, she's the first Lemurian dragon rider. Or she's going to be. At 14 years old, she's caught between these two worlds. So the Atlanteans don't like her. They don't want her around. Um, they look down on her. They are racist against her because of uh, her heritage. And meanwhile, the Lemurians, which are mainly the servants in the castle, uh, they see her as a traitor. She's trying to... Um, leave them behind and become an Atlantean. Uh, so they don't like her either. Nobody likes her. Uh, she's very lonely and very ostracized. She's bullied. She's picked on. Uh, so I illustrate that just very simply. You know, we start off with her waking up, which is a cliche. I know it's a cliche, but it can work going down from her tower in the castle into the great hall um, to to have breakfast and it's just really easy snippet it's going to be this chapter will be one day in the life of 14 year old jamila an important day in her life so she comes down of course she's not allowed to sit with the other pages um, they're all having breakfast together she's not allowed she sleeps with in the tower with them but they don't uh, allow her to dine with them. She's that ostracized. So she has to go and sit with the servants who are all Lemurian. And, and at this point in time, she's won them over. Uh, so we don't need to show her winning them over. We can just tell the audience. Tell the audience they didn't used to like her, but now she's won them over. Uh, and she has one particular best friend as well. So they're eating breakfast together, her and the serving girl. And uh, they're talking about how the knights are going to be selecting their squires soon, and many of the pages will be moving up and becoming squires. Jamila's worried who's going to pick her as a squire. She's Lemurian. She's the only Lemurian dragon rider ever. In the past seven years, no other Lemurians have bonded to a baby dragon. She's an anomaly. Who wants an anomaly as a squire? So they have that conversation and her friend kind of urges her uh, and, and says, well, there's a, a one particular dragon rider, dragon knight, um, Niobe, who's like extremely virtuous and goodly and caring and empathetic. And her squire has just been promoted uh, and knighted. So she needs a new squire. Like maybe she'll take you on. If anyone will have the compassion to, to take you on, it will be her. And Jamila says, oh, okay, well maybe like, I, you know, I, I can't believe it. I, I can't even believe that Naomi would do that. So she doesn't think much of it. She goes out with the other pages and they're flying their dragons through the mountains, exercising their dragons. Dragons need a lot of exercise. And Jamila is an outcast. She doesn't play games with them. Uh, she doesn't have all these acrobatics, dragon tag, dragon king of the hill. She doesn't get any of that. She has to just fly off on her own. Her and her dragon, solo. Her and Kerferes. And they're very isolated. So she flies further than any of them. 
Uh, she loves exploring the wilderness. That's what she does because she doesn't have any social contact. And while she's in the wilderness, she sees another uh, dragon on the horizon. And it happens to be Niobe, the goodly, friendly dragon rider. So she goes over to Niobe uh, and, you know, says hello and everything. It's very respectful. And... Um, she asks Niobe, eventually, she works up her courage and kind of blurts out and asks her, like, oh, I was hoping that you would take me on as your squire because nobody else will. You're the only person who might care. And Niobe, very calmly and very uh, politely and very kindly, explains to Jamila that because she is Lemurian, uh, she will never be a good dragon rider. And she shouldn't be a dragon rider at all. She is racially incapable. She's inferior. She's too dumb. And Niobe is not in trying to insult her and hurt her feelings. Niobe's just trying to explain to her, like, oh, I'm sorry, sweetie, but you're just too dumb. You can't do this. You can't do what we do. You can't be a dragon rider, even though you are a dragon rider. And Niobe is trying to be nice, but she is incredibly racist. Uh, and Jamila is just crushed, absolutely crushed. Her hero almost, this person she looked up to, uh, her one hope for acceptance just rejects her utterly. And of course, Jamila, being upset, she goes back to the castle and she's just crying. She's in tears. And she feels so low and so down on herself. Uh, and eventually she, she goes to sleep because this is a day in the life of Jamila, an important day in her life. And as she falls asleep, she's contacted in her dreams uh, by the uh, cult of the ancient masters. And the, the leader of the cult, Masahiro, comes to her and he offers her acceptance and belonging and love and power uh, and all of those things that her little teenage self is just dying for and that is the end of the chapter her first contact with the cult her rejection by her hero so again we're building pathos on the character we're trying to make you feel sorry for her feel bad for her and understand why she turned to the the dark side if you will uh, and I really enjoyed writing the chapter. Uh, I think we got some good prose. Uh, it's solid. And I'm, I'm happy with it. So that's what I wrote today. Let me know in the comments below, what did you write today? And share your writing. Uh, we'll do a video response. And I will sign off until I see you again. It's David Daniel Ducker.